What's up YouTube? Welcome to the Bible Wisdom YouTube channel. Um, I wanted to talk another episode about enduring until the end. You know, um, as we, uh, you know, get more uh, familiar with the different things that are coming on the news, you know, uh, more sin, uh, you know, that is out there. And I think we can feel tempted to sin ourselves. And so I think endure has to do with um, just maintaining our blamelessness and righteousness in these last days. Um, you know, I think how we can do that is, you know, I think I notice sometimes I feel weaker towards temptation when I am not really thinking about godliness or I'm not really, um, you know, uh, having my mind on set on things above where I'm more worldly, whether that be the shows that I'm watching, uh, the conversations that I'm having, the places that I'm going, you know, and then I can feel a little bit weaker, especially if I'm not intaking the word of God and, you know, reading scripture when I can daily or listening to audio scriptures, you know, doing those things. And then, of course, prayer, you know, those are some of the uh, things that we can do to build our strength against sin. I want to read to you um, 2 Peter, um, starting at verse 10. But the day of the Lord it, oh, sorry, this is Second Peter chapter 3, uh, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells so you know um, when we think about what we are doing you know um, it says you know since we know that this world is passing away we should be doing our best to be living having holy conduct and godliness you know um, it's so easy to kind of uh, drift away from these things you know especially Jesus elsewhere in the scripture talks about how the cares of this world you know the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things can get in and choke the word and make it unfruitful and so um, it's really important for us to you know have holy conduct and righteousness and godliness because, you know, Peter's bringing up how this new world that God is going to create is where righteousness dwells. And so when we think about being in this new world, you know, no one's there going to be looking at porn. You know, no one there is going to be sleeping around. You know, no one there is going to be using derogatory language or no one there is going to be stealing or lying you know and so if we find ourselves practicing those very things here in the here and now you know do we really think that we're going to find a place for ourselves in that new world now of course there are some great points of scripture that talk about how uh, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Um, there are 
great scriptures that talk about how we can know right now that we have eternal life. And so those are some good things. But, you know, um, Peter clearly in verse 11 is saying that we should, because we have the knowledge of the world passing away, live with holy conduct and godliness. And so, um, you know, the Bible elsewhere says that we should judge ourselves. And so, you know, we do have to examine ourselves and really think, you know, am I doing something wrong? Especially maybe in the eyes of the law, maybe in the eyes of God, you know, um, in both of those cases, you know, we can examine ourselves and say, you know, am I doing something that God would say, you know, is wrong? Now, I'm sure, you know, um, there are many things that can go wrong in our day, but, you know, especially how we're handling certain situations that if we did something wrong, are we confessing that sin, you know, and forsaking it? You know, in the event that we may do something wrong, you know, God still has instructions for us to do from that point, which is to confess our sins and forsake them. But, you know, after we do that, we are still called to walk free from sin, irregardless of the many teachings out there that say that, you know, we can never stop sinning or you know, we'll always have daily sins, you know, I don't see anywhere in scripture that is true other than, you know, different interpretations of those scriptures. But, you know, this video is not really going to get into that. But, you know, um, we are told in scripture to walk free from sin. And so uh, that should be our goal on the day to day. No, you know, I think enduring, like I've said in other videos, has to do with keeping our mind on where we're headed. You know, Peter just alluded to that, that we're headed to a place where righteousness dwells. You know, we're headed to heaven. And so if we constantly are thinking about all the problems that are in the world today, that we know about or problems that we don't know about i think god still calls us to action you know i think there are things that we do have to do you know you may have to confront someone about something that they're doing wrong you may have to uh you know write a letter to uh someone in charge letting them know that something in your city is not right you know, I think there are practical things that we can still do, even though this world is falling. You know, I think we still have to stand up and let our voice be heard about the right and wrong things that are happening in the world. But at the same time, I think enduring also has to do with, you know, patiently waiting, you know, and doing our job as far as the Christian life and, uh, you know, our literal job, you know, on, on the, on the job, but also doing our job as far as walking with God and, you know, not getting so caught up in all the different problems of the world, even though, Hey, I do look at the news, you know, uh, Jesus told us to watch and, you know, make sure we know we're up to date on things that are happening especially in regards to, you know, uh, passages like Matthew 24 and, you know, where to see uh, what's going on in the world. But I think we have to draw the line uh, in how our response is to some of these things. And I think enduring till the end really involves, um, you know, our walk with God and how we can draw near to God and you know uh, Brooke, Brooke uh, I think her name is uh, Lingerwood 
something like that um but she is from hillsong uh church even though you know i don't necessarily follow hillsong churches uh preaching but you know she's a singer and in one of her new songs called the fear of god i thought she did a great job in that song because she was saying how you know if we have the fear of god we can endure you know these last days attacks on the christian faith and on us individually that you know god jesus said himself that we should not fear man but we should fear god because he said that you know man may may be able to destroy our body but god holds the power to destroy both our body and our soul now you know of course god offers us salvation but it's good to keep in mind that god is someone that we should fear rather than people now yeah of course there are people out there that are just up to no good but you know god has the power to control those people god has the power to uh you know make sure that evil is put down and good is exalted and so you know jesus said in the book of john he said that you know um the light has come into the world um but people love the darkness but he also said elsewhere that the darkness does not comprehend the light and the light you know uh the darkness cannot overcome the light and so um you know i was thinking about this you know i i sometimes think that you know the world is divided on many things but i think it you know even is divided between good and evil you know and we know as christians that it's a division between you know believers and those who are walking a path contrary to god and so you know even paul says how we are in a war as far as we know that there are enemies of god that are trying to put down the church and really ultimately trying to fight against god and you know i view um you know sometimes the world seems to be kind of this battle between good and evil and then paul lets us know that that battle is also within us as we battle our flesh we battle within ourselves you know uh whether we are you know walking in the flesh or walking in the spirit and so there are different battles that you know we do participate in and i think enduring into the end is really i think one adding this to our prayer life about having a good attitude you know as much as we can about a lot of different things you know uh you know i looked up the definition of patience and it really is you know being able to wait for something with you know a good attitude without complaining so you know um i think that we do have to be patient for uh a lot of the end times events but you know we know that they're happening every day you know little by little there are more events that just point towards you know the end times and you know the rapture and you know the return of christ even though we don't necessarily know you know um uh, when certain events will take place but you know we do know that it will happen because we have to put our trust in god and what he says that he does uphold his word you know and um he doesn't turn back for anything and so we know that we have eternal life you know jesus didn't just die on the cross for our sins and then you know later on god is just going to change his mind and you know now we don't have eternal life or something no jesus already went to the cross and you know to me that just seals all of the end times events because you know uh jesus dying on the cross to me god is not going to overlook that 
you know, and even though it was necessary and even though Jesus laid down his life, you know, for us, but, you know, it was, it's such a huge event, you know, the son of God dying on the cross for our sins, you know, I don't think God is going to overlook all of that work that Jesus did and, you know, not bring about end times events. And so, you know, we can trust God and, um, you know, uh, it's second Peter is a great book to read, you know, um, uh, first John, uh, two, uh, four says he who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. And so I think, you know, we should be preaching, believe in Jesus but I think also we need to be preaching, you know, which I think people do. But uh, I think we need to be, you know, making sure that we're keeping his commandments as well. And, um, you know, there are so many things that we can be doing in the word of God. You know, I thought of uh, making a message about why. I think we read the Bible daily or try to at least read it daily is because I think we forget, you know, it's so easy to um, study a passage of scripture and then, you know, maybe you don't look at it for, you know, a day or two or a week or a month or and hopefully not longer than that. But I think that, you know, even though we can remember it once we actually read it we're like oh yeah i remember that but i think that time in between before we read it we may not think about that scripture a lot or um it may not necessarily stay in our mind and of course you know we have the holy spirit that brings scriptures to our remembrance and you know um the Holy Spirit reminds us of what Jesus said, but I think one of the reasons why we should study, you know, as often as we can is one to study to show ourselves approved before God, but also, you know, so we don't forget, you know, I think, you know, especially when we're faced with certain situations and we can kind of forget, you know, what did the Bible say that I should do? Or what was that verse that, you know, said that one thing that I should be doing in this situation? And so we can sort of forget, you know, our instructions. And so I think that is one of the practical reasons why we should study the Bible is because, you know, there I, you know, heard a message about how there's just so much information that is happening in the world. You know, I think. You know, this is why, you know, Ecclesiastes says, uh, you know, that we should we should be warned about, you know, anything other than the Bible, you know, and uh, how Ecclesiastes talks about how uh, of the making of books, there is no end. And so there are just so many different books out there and so many different things to study, you know, that. It can be overwhelming, you know, um, especially, you know, when you have AI now, um, you know, that is able to just, uh, you know, really give you different information from uh, the computer and things on its database. And so um, that being said, I think with all that intake of information, not that we shouldn't read other books sometimes, you know, but um you know i think it's so easy to uh get piles of uh just information that we forget some of the uh scriptures that we're supposed to be reading and when you really think about it you know there is a lot to study in the bible and especially for that person that hasn't quite yet started studying even though we can get a lot from a pastor or a sermon, you know, um, I think that 
you know, there are uh, really important things that, you know, we have to be reading in the scriptures to really um, help our life as we, you know, uh, head forward in life. And so, um, you know, I just wanted to bring that up as well. But, um, you know, there are just so many things that, you know, we need to do to endure. And, you know, I heard a pastor say today how, you know, he was talking about, you know, the rapture and that, you know, he believes that we are the last generation. It was interesting what he was saying was he was saying how um, world the World War One and World War Two were the sign that you know it really ushered in israel becoming a nation and it was one of the end time signs that let us know that we were you know in the last of the last days because he brought out how um before uh the time of world war one and world war two there had been only, I think he said five uh, major earthquakes recorded. Now, I don't know if that is because of a recording problem or no one just jotted down what happened. But still, he, st- he said that there were only five major uh, earthquakes before World War One and World War Two. But after World War One and World War Two. There have been over 900,000 earthquakes recorded. I think that is, you know, both small and great earthquakes. And, you know, uh, there has been countless uh, famines and pestilence, which is basically disease. And so, um, you know, I thought that was a pretty interesting point, even though, you know, I don't necessarily like to, uh, you know, put a uh, timestamp on something and say, you know, oh, I know that we're the last generation, you know, but, you know, at some point there does need to be a last generation before the rapture. And anyway, I let said all that to say that he was talking about how in his church, you know, if he's being optimistic, he says, 50% 50% of his church will be taken in the rapture. But if he's being a little bit more uh, serious in his estimation, then he thinks only 10% will be taken in his in the church in the rapture, in his particular church, not the church as a whole, but he was talking about his particular congregation. And so I thought that was interesting because, you know, um, Jesus does mention a few points about how we should be counted worthy to escape all that will happen and stand before the Son of Man. You know, I think I heard someone saying this, uh, you know, I don't know when. It was a while ago now, but uh, they were talking about how, you know, at the rapture, Jesus is going to make us righteous. And that, you know, basically they were implying that You know, your sins that you commit now don't really matter because once you get taken to heaven, you know, then you'll be made clean. And, you know, to me, scripture is really talking about how we should be walking in a clean state now. And, you know, um, we should be improving. You know, we should be growing. You know, Um, and I think that just comes with you know, walking more with God. And so, um, you know, letting Jesus Christ change you. And, um, you know, uh, as I, you know, started to get more serious about God, I did notice how certain sins, you know, uh, broke off from me, you know. And I think, it was a combination of asking God to help me. I think it was a combination of, you know, trying to read more scripture. Um, you know, I think scripture has a part to play, but also, you know, 
I got baptized, you know, because I didn't even remember when I was baptized as a kid. Even though some people say that you can be saved, you know, even if you were baptized as a kid and then you grow up and, you know, maybe you're not that good of a Christian, you'll still go to heaven. You know, I don't know all the different semantics, but, you know, um, I got rebaptized in 2017. And so, you know, I think, you know, God can help us, you know, break off our sins, you know, and I don't think that there should be any sin that is that we're saying that, you know, is too great for God to help us to stop completely. You know, even though some sins, you know, I think do take some time, you know, uh, to overcome. But to me, scripture is and God himself is really telling us that, you know, I don't think there's any sin that can really hold us down where we're saying, you know, oh, this is just my cross to bear or, oh, this is just, you know, my sin that I'm continuing in. But you know i think that um god will make it clear to us if we we keep searching for god and um you know there are definitely uh you know right ways to walk with god and i think there are definitely error ways to walk with god and of course you know i think i we all have walked uh you know in a way that wasn't necessarily the right way but as we keep walking with god i think that you know we will get more clear about what we're supposed to be doing you know and how we're supposed to be doing it and so anyway thanks so much for checking out this video you know hopefully it was interesting to someone hopefully you got something from it um and um i will talk to you on the next one see ya